Dividend growth stocks. Who doesn't like investing in dividend stocks? The thing that I like the most about dividend growth stocks is the fact that they are not boring or slow growing at all. You get your dividends paid but also some value in the stock price. On top of that, one of the requirements that I have with dividend growth stock is that they should increase the dividends in high amounts. In this video I'm going to show you a list of 4 stocks that I think are one of the most interesting dividend stocks right now. I'm very excited to see what you guys think about this stock, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you think a company is missing in this list, please let me know as well. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. First company on this list is T. Rowe Price Group, ticker symbol T-R-O-W. They have a 52 week high of $224 and a 52 week low of $106. Right now it's at $123 as of recording this video. T. Rowe Price provides asset management services for individual and institutional investors. It offers a broad range of no load US and international stock, hybrids, bonds and money market funds. T. Rowe Price is a 28 billion market cap company with a PE ratio of only 9. This could indicate that they are undervalued. T. Rowe Price has a 12 trailing month revenue of 7.7 .7 billion. And in this graph we see that revenue went up quite nice and steady, except for the latest quarter. Current profit margin is at 37.6%, which is above my 10% minimum. So this looks very good. Especially since it's higher than the 5 year average, meaning margins are increasing. A really important metric for me is free cash flow growth. Since this is used to pay down debt, buy back shares, but also pay dividends. So you want this number to increase. In this graph we see that free cash flow is growing in the long run and that there were two years with some big declines. But after that it went up quite nice and steady, so this looks good to me. As I said a second ago, free cash flow is used to buy back shares, which is very important for a dividend stock, since this makes it easier to maintain and increase the dividends of course, since total dividends paid is going down. In this graph we see that shares outstanding is going down, so this looks really good to me. In the past 5 years they bought back roughly 5%. And now the part that I really like about T. Rowe stock. The dividends. The current dividend yield is at 3.89% which is pretty high. Annual payout is at $4.8 a share or $1.2 each quarter. Payout ratio is at only 42% meaning they have 85% left in cash to pay down debt, buy back shares and other investments directly into the business. The 5 year growth rate is at 15% which is also very nice. T. Rowe did increase the dividends for 36 years in a row. So overall this looks really impressive and I love this dividend scorecard. My final conclusion on this stock is that I really like it from both a value and a dividend perspective. Debt is really low which is not covered in this analysis, but that comforts me a lot. Dividends look really great, so from a dividend and value point of investing they are definitely on my radar. Right now I don't own any shares of T. Rowe stock. Second company on this list is Nike, ticker symbol NKA. They have a 52 week high of $179 a share and a 52 week low of $101 a share. Right now it's at $140 a share as of recording this video. I think we all know Nike and that's because Nike is the largest athletic footwear and apparel brand in the world. It designs, develops and markets athletic apparel, footwear, equipment and accessoires. Nike has a market cap of 181 billion with a PE ratio of 29, which could indicate that you pay a premium for the stock. But on the other hand, I think Nike is such a strong brand, they might be worth it. Nike has a 12 trailing month revenue of 46 billion, and in this graph we see that the revenue went up quite nice and steady except for the lockdown periods. Current profit margin is at 13.1% and is significantly higher than the 5 year average of 9.9%. So I like it a lot. And this is because Nike is cutting the minimum, meaning they are going to sell directly to the consumer, which will lead to higher margins. Next up is free cash flow. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. I also want to mention that I'm almost at 1000 subscribers, so help me achieving this huge milestone by giving me a subscribe. In return you will receive similar analysis to this one every week. Let's continue by checking the free cash flow growth. In this graph we see that free cash flow is up and down a lot. The big decline in 2020 is related to the lockdown period, so I'm not worried about that. But I do prefer a bit more steadier and consistent pattern here since free cash flow is used to pay down debt, buy back shares and pay dividends. 
In this graph we see the shares outstanding are decreasing, which is a good thing. They issued a few new shares recently which is related to the lockdown periods. And in the most recent quarter they started to buy back shares again. So I'm feeling really comfortable right now. In the past 5 years Nike bought back roughly 5% of the shares outstanding. Which is really nice since this makes it more easier to maintain and support the dividends since less total dividends is paid. Right now dividend yield is at 1% and Nike pays a $1.22 each year. In dividends or $0.31 each quarter. The dividend yield isn't really that high to be honest, but I really like the next part, which is the payout ratio sitting at only 30%, meaning they have 70% left in cash to pay down debt and buy back shares. The 5 year growth rate is at 11%, so this looks also really good to me, and they grew the dividends for 20 years in a row. Very impressive. So overall I think you got a strong brand with a pretty decent dividend scorecard. My final conclusion on Nike is that you pay a premium for the stock, and that's also because of the brand itself. All other parts of the business looks really good to me. Debt is at a healthy level, which is not covered in this video, and return on invested capital is also very high. So to me, Nike is a stock to dive in deeper and definitely add to your watch list. Right now, I don't own any shares of Nike. Third company on this list is Home Depot. This company is in many of my lists, and with reason. Home Depot has a 52 week high of $420 a share and 52 week low of $267. Right now they are at $302 a share as of recording this video. Home Depot is the world's largest home improvement specialty retailer operating more than 2300 warehouse stores. Home Depot is a 311 billion market cap company with a PE ratio of 18, which could indicate that they are undervalued or near value valuation based on the PE ratio. Home Depot has a 12 trading month revenue of 152 billion. In this graph we see that revenue is going up quite nice and steady and took a really big jump during the lockdown periods, where a lot of people started to improve their home and anything. Current profit margin is at 10.8% and is slightly above the 5 year average, so this looks really good to me. Especially since Home Depot has a significantly higher profit margin than the competitors such as Lowy's. Next up is free cash flow. For me it's very important that free cash flow is growing since this is used to pay down debt, buy back shares and pay dividends. In this graph we see that free cash flow is going up quite nice and steady, with a big increase during the lockdown periods. To me this looks very good. Another thing that I really like about Home Depot is the fact that they buy back a lot of shares as we see in this graph. This makes it more easier to maintain and increase the dividends since total dividends paid will go down. In the past 5 years they bought back roughly 14% of the shares outstanding, which is really a lot. And when we check the dividend scorecard we see that current dividend yield is at 2.5% and payout ratio is at only 45%, meaning they have 55% left in cash to pay down debt and buy back shares for instance. And with the high buyback rate this payout ratio will definitely go down in the coming years. The 5 year growth rate is at 70% which is really high and they grew the dividends for 9 years in a row. So to me this is a great dividend growth stock. The reason why I also love Home Depot is the fact that it's such a solid business which is still capable of growing as it seems. They have a low debt compared to the free cash flow which isn't included in this analysis. And they also have a really high return on invested capital which is something I really like. I do own shares of Home Depot and I'm really bullish on the company. But I'm always checking the quarterly results since it will be harder for a big company to grow in high amounts. So keep an eye on the numbers, but for now, a great dividend growth stock in my opinion. Last company on this list is Texas Instruments. Ticker symbol TXN. Texas Instruments stock has a 52 week high of $202 and a 52 week low of $148. Right now TXN stock is at $177 a share as of recording this video. Texas Instruments generates over 95% of its revenue from semiconductors and the remainder from its well-known calculators. Texas Instruments is the world's largest maker of analog chips, which are used to process real-world signals such as sound and power. TXN is a 163 billion market cap company with a PE ratio of almost 20, which could mean they are near their fair valuation. The 12 training month revenue is at 18.96 billion. And in this graph we see that revenue went up and down quite a lot. Since 2020 the revenue went up to all time highs. And this is also because of the demand for chips, so keep this in mind. Profit margin is at 43% which is really high. 
On top of that, it's significantly higher than the 5 year average of 36. So definitely like this part. But again, keep in mind that this is also because of the demand for chips. Next up is free cash flow, which went up quite nice and steady in the past. But in the most recent years, it went down. So definitely keep an eye on this number since this is used to pay down debt, buy back shares and also pay dividends. And when we check the shares outstanding, we see that it's going down big time, which is a good thing. In the past 5 years, TXM bought back roughly 7.5% of the shares outstanding, which makes it more easier to maintain and support the dividends, since less total dividends are paid. Right now, dividend yield is at 2.57%, which is pretty decent. Annual payout is at $4.6 a share, or $1.15 each quarter. Payout ratio is at 47%, meaning they have 53% left in cash to pay down debt and buy back shares for instance. And with all the shares they are buying back, payout ratio will go down. So this looks really good to me. The 5 year growth rate is at 18%, which is very high. And I definitely like this number. They grew the dividends for 16 years in a row, which is also very nice. Overall, I really like the dividend scorecard and from a dividend perspective, it looks really good to me. My conclusion on TXN is that revenue will go up and down quite a lot. So this might impact the growth of the business and the dividends of course. So keep this in mind. But on the other hand, dividends look really good to me. Right now I don't own any shares of TXN, but I will add them to my watch list for sure. So this was the list of 4 dividend growth stocks that I think they are really great companies. Right now I only do own Home Depot in my portfolio, but all the others are on my watch list and some are even in my buy list. But Remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about a stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of the company to you. I would really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.